It's National Pyjama Day, where over 50,000 children are wearing their favourite PJs into their preschools this morning. It's to raise funds for the Irish Hospice Foundation's Hospice Home Care for Children programme, which provides outreach nurses to go into the homes of families with life-limiting illness. Now, in just a moment, I'll be speaking with Dr Mary Devins, Ireland's first consultant paediatrician with a special interest in paediatric palliative care, whose post is also funded by the money raised on Pyjama Day. But first, our reporter Ashling Reardon went to Mullingar to meet one family who benefits from the service. Oh, big kiss, Erin. Sisterly love. Erin, Casey and Amelia are just like any other siblings. They like to play and watch cartoons on the television. But there's one big difference. Erin has a terminal illness. It was basically from birth, um, she starts seizing, she had seizures. She had 40 and 50 seizures a day. So that went on for like uh, nearly a year, that, that many seizures. Um, also, like she's developmental delay. Um, she has um, chromosome disorders, we found that out when she was six months old. She's three chromosome disorders and um, yeah, epilepsy and cardiac problems as well. Every day, Erin has to take a lot of medication. This is all our epilepsy meds here, all these. She gets these in the morning and night time. And then there's like her tablets for her sick stomach, you know. Then there's like her, cal her your normal Calpols, your ibuprofens for the pain. And then that's our morphine patch as well. And then she has our Oromorph that she gets on top of the morphine patch because she does have chronic pain as well. Now there's an estimated 1,400 children living with life-limiting illness in Ireland, with 350 of these children dying every year. Deirdre is a children's outreach nurse who visits 19 families in Mullingar and the surrounding region. There are eight of these nurses in the country, five of which are being directly funded by the money raised from the Irish Hospice Foundation's National Pyjama Day. Our main role would be, you know, we, we, it's great that we're able to be out in the communities. So we call to the families and you see them at home. Um, when a, a child is in their own environment and you're there with the family, it, it's more relaxed and you get to see, you know, firsthand difficulties that they're having, um, um, I suppose, medically and socially. Um, I suppose for the families, it, you know, it, it's hard. It is really hard and um, it's 24-7. Um, so it's when you see them at home, you kind of see where they're most vulnerable and what you can do to help them, to link in with the other professionals that are involved with them and to work together as a team and, you know, try and give these families the best support that you can, um, both medically and, um, you know, just to sit down maybe with the parents and have a cup of tea, have a chat. For Aaron's mom Lydia and husband Jason, Deirdre is a lifeline. Where Deirdre comes into play, um, she's taken away a lot of stress from me because, um, as Deirdre was saying, Aaron has an awful lot of chronic pain all the time, and I would have had to ring doctors and chase up with them if Aaron was having a, an episode here and trying to explain, and she has so many doctors in, in different hospitals, I would have happened to be ringing them and then they might not have been there and I would have to ring another doctor, another doctor, another doctor, in the middle of all this happening and here on my own. So Deirdre, I can just pick up the phone to Deirdre and she goes and does what she has to do and gets back to me and it makes life kind of a lot easier. That just leaves me to deal with her and then help her in her pain and give her morphine and I don't have to worry about that where before I was running around like a mad woman on the phone all the time, getting credit on my phone all the time, ringing people, ringing people, ringing people. Deirdre spoke to me about the memory boxes, making memory boxes and doing stuff for Casey and Amelia. But when they're older and uh, two weeks ago we had to have the conversation about do we want CPR, ventilation, all that, our wishes, what our wishes were and stuff like that because the time is coming closer. And Deirdre supported me an awful lot around that. Do you know, like, she made it easier for me. Um, <clears throat> kind of took the fear away. But if I was upset, I was able to ring her. If I had any questions, I was able to ring her. She has a huge part to play, even for my mental health around trying to deal with everything, because it is hard, like. And the Irish Hospice Foundation says the funds raised by National Pyjama Day are crucial if this support is to continue. 
Ashling Reardon there uh, visiting Aaron's house in Mullingar. Now, Dr. Mary Devons is Ireland's first consultant paediatrician with a special interest in paediatric palliative care. And Mary, you're involved in this whole scheme, we'll call it, um, National Pyjama Day, raising funds. The funds go to making you available and the nurses available. Just explain the hierarchy of how it works. Um, well, the, there's eight outreach nurses throughout the country. They're geographically placed to best benefit children locally mm. and there's a lot of teams working with these children in their local area so you have local disability services, local palliative care teams, local paediatricians but the outreach nurses are able to go into the home and help I suppose be an extra resource and an extra communication for these families to help them link in with all these teams because a lot of these children have so many complex needs mm. and their parents are so heavily involved in caring for them that they need somebody that they can contact easily and that can help support them. Um, these nurses then would link in with the local teams and then would also link in with myself. Um, I'm based here in Dublin and would see children here in Crumlin and in the Coombe Hospital but I also am available to support the nurses nationally but also local uh, GPs, local paediatricians, local palliative care teams. So I'm, I'm here as an extra resource. And in Ashling's report, she said there were 1,400 children living with these limited life uh, illnesses in the country. And when, when you watch there, even I, I was struck by the amount of medication alone for Erin. Yeah. To keep on top of that, the benefit of having Deirdre coming in to help alone must be immeasurable. Well, I mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, th these families are absolutely amazing because most of... Uh, most of these children, their rooms are like little hospital rooms because they have so much equipment. They may have suction machines, um, they may be on uh, feeding through a, a tube directly into their stomach. They have many medications, they may have many teams that are involved. And having somebody that can go into the house and basically help coordinate with all the other teams and even just give the family support where they can sit down and chat and talk through their worries and concerns and then the nurse will know well who, who best to contact to help the family if they have a particular concern. That's right, just to know you're not on your own. Yeah. And then for the nurse to know she's not on her own, that she can go up to yeah, she has I mean, you, you, whoever the local doctor might be that's involved and then yourself yeah, as well. I mean, but you are the only person in Ireland doing this, are you? Well, I'm, I'm the only paediatrician that has a special interest in palliative care. Um, there's lots of paediatricians and teams around the country that are helping care for these children but I have extra expertise to help support those teams around things like symptom management because a lot of these children may have quite complex symptoms like pain or sickness or seizures or lots of secretions so I can help support them in that way but also just help the teams if they have a, a difficult situation that they need to talk through. Um, and hopefully help the families as well because we cannot change the ultimate outcome for these families but our hope is that we can um, make the journey a bit easier and help them create some nice memories and have it that they have no regrets when they look back in the future and hopefully support these families in, in some small way to make things easier. At their very stressful time. Um, and then the Pyjama Day initiative, you just might explain what that is, yeah. that the kids going to preschool are wearing pyjamas today. Yeah, no, it's, it's a fantastic initiative. Um, this is, it's been running for about 11 years and this is the fourth year that the Irish Hospice Foundation benefit. And there's about 55,000 children in creches and play schools around the country who wear pyjamas uh, into the creche and their families donate money and all that money goes directly towards these outreach nurses.